Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 28 of the Classic Wrestling Series and tonight ladies and gentlemen, it is January 30th, 2011 we are at the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts 15,113 fans witnessed the biggest Royal Rumble in history that's right ladies and gentlemen, we're at the Royal Rumble 2011 ladies and gentlemen, this is the 40 man over the top world battle royal with the winner going on to face a champion of his choosing at Wrestlemania, ladies and gentlemen. This is the, I think this is like the fourth, uh, not the fourth, the 24th annual Wrestlemania. So, what do we have to look forward to? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have got Randy Orton versus The Miz. Good matchup. Edge versus uh, Dolph Ziggler. And the Royal Rumble match itself. This one should be pretty good. So let's find out what the first match is. So we just had the intro to the Royal Rumble talking about how all forty men are gonna be uh forty men are gonna be in the rumble. This is the first time it's happening. Also, Finger Elevens is um living in the dream. Fucking awesome son. Great way to uh, start off WrestleMania uh, Royal Rumble, I think personally. So we have now got the acting general manager of SmackDown, or as I like to call her, the fucking annoying general manager of SmackDown, uh, Vicky Galello, uh, talking about that uh, the spear is now illegal and dangerous and all this bollocks. Uh, basically, she spanned the spear. Um, if Ed uses the spear, uh, he will lose the world title. Bullshit. Um, but whatever. Um... Don't particularly like that, but hey-ho, he's got the execution, which is always a good move. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's watch this match and see how it goes. So we just had Edge versus uh, Dolph Ziggler for the world title. Um, bit of a weird one to open with, because it's like, well, why do you have the W? Why do you have the World Heavyweight Championship open in the show? I don't get it. But uh, not a bad uh, back and forwards. Um, uh. A lot of uh, wrestling until Edge hits the execution on Ziggler, but Ziggler touches the ring ropes, forcing Edge to break the hold. Ziggler performs a lead drop bulldog on Edge for a near fall. Uh, Ziggler applies a Randy Orton uh, headlock or a uh, sleep hold on Edge, but he escapes, performs an execution on uh, Ziggler again. Uh, Edge pins him, but then Vicky gets involved to pull the referee out, uh, avoiding the pinfall at a two count, which is annoying. Kelly Kelly then comes out to attack Guerrero. She would then be uh by fired um um a few weeks later. I think it would actually be two weeks later. She would be fired. Uh Ziggler then performed a zigzag on Edge for a near fall. Uh Ziggler applied another sleep hold on Edge, but Edge collided with uh, the referee, allowing Edge to get the spear on Ziggler and then a kill switch on Ziggler to retain the title. I don't get it. Um I know the referee was boycotted, uh, you know, he was out. Uh, but I don't get it. Why? Why? The Spears not, you know, technically speaking, all the referee has to do is watch the, re uh, watch the replay and technically speaking, Edge is then not the champion anymore. So, yeah, fuck off. Um, <laughs> stupid, but I don't understand it. So, but the, um, it was an okay match. Uh, nothing special, but I mean, it's Edge versus uh, Dolph Ziggler. Edge can go. Um, unfortunately, at WrestleMania 27 would be his last WrestleMania appearance, um, because unfortunately, due to, uh, his neck injury, he would sustain against, Bro uh, Spearing Brotus Clay, I think it was, um, Edge would, fortunately, um, retire from the industry, um, which is quite weird, because now it's like eight years since Edge has, uh, retired, it's bloody strange. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, um, he hasn't actually, I don't think he's appeared on WWE TV in a while, um, he's doing comedy stand-up and stuff like that, but yeah, he hasn't appeared on WWE TV in about a few months, I want to say, um, at this point, uh, of recording, so yeah. Uh, next up guys, it's, uh, currently in the ring, it's Randy Orton versus The Miz for the WWE Championship match, let's watch this one. So we just had the, under uh, the Undertaker. Uh, Miz versus Randy Orton. 
Um, okay, match to start off with. Uh, nothing really of now. Uh, Ed, uh, Miz going out to the win and stuff like that. Uh, during the match, Orton would attempt an RKO. Miz countered into a, uh, a stole crush, stole crushing finale, but then Orton would counter that into an and uh, an Olympic slam. Uh, the Miz retrieved the WWE Championship and attempted to walk away, but Orton performed a clothesline on Miz before he could do that. Um, he performed an elevated DDT, uh, which uh, he used as the ropes. Uh, um, and then all of a sudden the Nexus appeared, right, uh, referee was distracted by the ne Nexus, Orton threw Arrow Twilight onto the Nexus and the referee, so that would be knocking out the referee, uh, Orton performed the RKO on Miz, but then all of a sudden Punk appeared out of nowhere, I don't know where the fuck he appeared from, uh, performs a GTS on Orton, and then Miz pins Orton to retain the title, uh, quite weird seeing the Miz retain the title this way, um, then The Miz would go on to face John Cena at WrestleMania. Um, unfortunately, The Miz would then uh, sustain a concussion uh, during the match. So The Miz genuinely does not remember uh, WrestleMania 27 when he headlined WrestleMania. Uh, weirdly enough, um, that would go on. Uh, that would lead into the Royal Rumble guys, um, but better, uh, which is coming up soon. Um, Orton would go on to face CM Punk at WrestleMania uh, in a bloody good matchup. So next up, guys, we have got Natalia taking on Layla and uh, Michelle McGraw. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we just had Natalia defending the Divas Championship against Layla, Michelle McGraw, and Eve Torres in a fatal four-way match. Um, this one was okay, uh, weirdly. Uh, surprisingly quite good. Um, around this time, the women weren't allowed to have, uh, long matches, um, so this one was actually quite nice to actually see Natalia, uh, Michelle McCool, Layla, and Torres in the ring and actually perform very, very well, I think. Um, Natalia attempted the, uh, double sharpshooter, I think this would be the first time she tried to attempt that, I could be wrong on that one, uh, on Eve and Layla, Michelle performed a bit boot to Natalia. Uh, but, uh, Michelle McCall then attempted another one uh, on Natalia, but uh, she avoided it, resulting in, in McCall uh, performing it onto Layla, and then Eve hitting a diver moonsault to win the title. Um, surprisingly good match. Uh, we've just had the r Rumble uh, preview of who would win. And then, ladies and gentlemen, now we have got the Royal Rumble, and uh, amazingly, CM Punk is coming out at number one. So, let's find out what goes on. So we've just had uh, the core and the new Nexus uh, basically having a brawl. Um, one of the more funnier things is uh, Michael Cole saying that if they stop, if they wouldn't stop brawling, they would all be eliminated from the Rumble. Um, I want to know what would happen if they continued to. Would that mean that nine extra slots would just get opened up? That's weird. So uh, we've got punk in the ring which is pretty cool and then uh number two entrant is going to be daniel bryan ladies and gentlemen i think that's actually a really cool way to kick off the rumble so what we're going to do guys is i'm going to watch the whole match and then uh i'm going to use wikipedia just to uh go through who went through uh who was uh the next entrant and who were they eliminated by and stuff like that so guys i hope you enjoy that because i am uh, not looking forward to it it's 40 men in a royal rumble yay Hello ladies and gentlemen, we just had the Royal Rumble and I'm going to go through um, who was eliminated and stuff like that. So, first two entrants were Sam Punk and Daniel Bryan, then number three was Justin uh, Justin Gabriel of the Nexus, uh, of the core, do apologise. He was then eliminated by Daniel Bryan. Next up was Zack Ryder, he was eliminated by Daniel Bryan. Next up was, uh, number five was William Regal. Uh, really nice to see Regal uh, back in the ring. Uh, number six was Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase would then eliminate uh, William Regal. Uh, seventh was John Morrison. Uh, entrant number eight was Yoshitatsu. Number nine was uh, Husky Harris. Number ten was Chavo Guerrero. I generally forgot that Eddie, uh, Chavo Guerrero was still in the company at this point, which was uh, it's a nice surprise. Number 11 was Mark Henry, number 12 which was JTG, number 13 was Michael McGillicuddy, number 14 was Chris Masters, again Chris Masters in WWE at this time, again quite surprising. Uh, number 15 was David Oltonga, uh, uh, number 16 was Tyra Rex, um, okay, whatever. Uh, next up was uh, Vladimir Kozlov at number 17, number 18 was R-Truth, number 19 was The Great Carly. 
Number 20 was Mason Ryan. Number 21 was Booker T. Uh, he was a surprise entrant. Number 22 was John Cena. Number 23 was Hornswoggle. Uh, number 24 was Titan Kid. Uh, always like Titan Kid, to be fair. Number 25 was Heath Slater. Number 26 was Kofi Kingston. An amazing spot to get back into the ring, guys. Really enjoyed it. Number 27 was Jack Swagger. Number 28 was King Sheamus, a.k.a. Uh, Sheamus. He won the uh, King of the Ring that year. Uh, number 29 was Ray Mysterio. Number 30 was Wade Barrett. Number 31 was Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler having a fucking Royal Rumble match and a fucking title match. Fuck off. Number 32 was Diesel, uh, another surprise entrant. Uh, number 33 was Drew McIntyre. Number 34 was Alex Lyrie. Uh, this was amazing because Alex, uh, Alex Lyrie was on the top rope. He wasn't supposed to be eliminated, but he was elim uh, He slipped and fell and eliminated himself. So uh, to eliminate John Cena, uh, it would be The Miz. So that's how uh, The Miz versus John Cena came up in the Rumble. Number 25 was Big Show. Number 26 was Ezekiel Jackson. Number 27 was Santino Morello, who actually did a very smart bin, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, number 38 was Alberto Del Rio. Number 39 was Randy Orton. Again, Randy Orton having a fucking title match um, and a Royal Rumble spot. Fuck off. And number 40 was Kane. So, uh, Alberto Del Rio was the winner of the Royal Rumble, but Santino Moreira nearly won. It was actually quite surprising. He actually rolled out of the ring, came back, thought he threw um, Alberto Del Rio over the top rope. Uh, decided to do, uh, you know, and then got eliminated. It was brilliant. Um, and yeah, so that was the Rumble. Uh, like I say, I have used uh, Wikipedia just to get the Rumbles and stuff like that. Um, so, to be fair, um, uh, just going to talk about the, uh, re uh, the, re uh, the reception and how everything happened. Uh, so, the Royal Rumble received positive, again, I'm using Wikipedia, I don't know if this is going to be true or not, but this is what I have been, uh, this is what I have been, uh, this is what I see. The Royal Rumble received positive reviews, uh, most notably from Al O'Carl uh, and Jim Corden of Right After Wrestling on Sirius Radio 98, who called it one of the best Royal Rumble matches in recent memory. Writing for the United Kingdom's Sun newspaper, Rob Nicola, uh, Rob McNichols praised the event, particularly noticing, uh, noted, noted, excuse me, noting, Alberto Del Rio surprised Royal Rumble victory and John Morrison's impressive performance, which he wrote, featuring arguably the spot of a decade as John Morrison was not from the apron onto the guardrail, but avoided el elimination by gripping the barrier and leaping back onto the steps. It uh, it truly had been uh, had to be seen to be believed. Uh, using parkour uh, to do that, and then uh, getting on the steps, and then kicking William Regal off, uh, uh, kicking Regal's head uh, head in. Uh, that was pretty funny, uh, to be said. Um, he further praises Dolph Ziggler's performance in a big match situation, given a nine out of ten rating on his match with Edge, and the story between Miz and Orton match told in a match that received an eight out of ten. Overall, he awarded the event eight point five out of ten. Slam wrestling writers Dave Potter and Nick Tyron shared similar com. Compliments of the event, praising the short, bold, crowd-pleasing appearances of both Kevin Nash and Booker T. Overall, they also awarded the event a score of 8.5 out of 10. The event received 476,000 buys, up from the previous year's 465,000 buys. So, what did I think of the show overall? Um, to be fair, for a four-match card, really good. Uh, it was an okay show. I genuinely was very pleased with the show. I thought it was uh, a bit of a, a breath of fresh air after what I thought would, would be a bit of a weak TLC pay-per-view uh, from 2009. Uh, uh, 2010, sorry, I do apologise. Uh, last year's uh, TLC. Uh, I thought it was a little bit weak. And they needed something to just uh, kick it in high gear to kick off the new year. Uh, right. And to be fair, the Royal Rumble was just that. It was an amazing Royal Rumble. Not really a weak match on the card, uh, but if I had to choose uh, worse, um, I'll go from good to best, uh, which is fair. Uh, the Fatal 4-Way Women's match was good. Then I would pick uh, The Miz versus uh, Randy Orton as third. 
Uh, the Royal Rumble match as second uh, sounds weird, I know, and then uh, Edge versus the uh, Edge versus Dolph Ziggler as num uh, as the best match of the night. Um, but I will. Uh, the reason why uh, the Royal Rumble match is second is because Matt Striker fucking spoiled the fucking show, saying that a new face will win win the Royal Rumble. Guess who won? Alberto Del Rio. Fuck off, Matt Striker. Thank you very much for fucking spoiling the matchup. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode 28 of the Classic Wrestling Series. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. And next week, um, it will be another surprise with you. I may go back to my roots. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the Classic Wrestling Series. I've been Peter Samuels, and I will see you next week for episode 29. Catch you on the flip side.